Moje dzieciństwo. My childhood was wonderful. Było wspaniałe. Miałam I had a pasture. Swoją kr- and my pyzia cow. Miałam rówieśników. I had friends with whom in this pasture we played all kinds of games and fun. I felt so sorry sometimes when my mother called out, Yuzek, come and help. Of course Yuzek ran immediately, because what I would not do for my mother. It was a pity to leave these guys behind when we were just about to score a goal with a rock ball, because there was no other. We made our skis from barrel boards. We chased the bicycle wheels. Not to mention the fact that we played theatre. In a word, it was a wonderful childhood. Mind you, it was during occupation. There were very difficult things, very painful. The nightmare of war passed, and we all survived. We were very lucky with my family, although we brushed against death several times. After A-levels, I enrolled at the Academy of Fine Arts and for the History of Art. Since I was accepted here and there, I decided to study both courses at the same time. But it was not that difficult at all. All the more because, again, I was lucky. I was able to be understood by professors, educators, and they took me with a pinch of salt when Wilkon rushed from the Planty Park to the Jagiellonian University. I had this kindness of those wonderful people, great people. Professor Escher, Bochna, Szablowski. I'm talking about the Jagiellonian University. Pronaszko, Cibisowa Rudzka Marczyński, my teacher. I was in his studio. These um, little wolves of mine, it is such an idea that for the first time they come out of the mother's den into the world. And suddenly something like that happens, that brings them into such a trance. 
trance. That is why this rhythm of slowly coming out of tense, of those watching and the subsequent experiences, that is the subject of the book. The wolves reach the forest opening on the edge of a small lake. Old lime trees with dense leaves grew by the lake edge. In the sunshine they looked like gods. When they looked into the glittering, obedient depth, they saw four little wolves just like them. You need to jump into the lake and forge friendship. One, two, three, four. Hearts were pounding like crazy. Cold water splashed from under the feet. It was completely different on a hard forest path. Water flowed under the tummies and the puppies felt light as feathers. The droplets trickled down the heads and tickled the noses. However, the most they were surprised by the fact that as far as the eye could see, there was no sight of four water wolves. They bravely climbed a low slope. They shook off the water by splashing thousands of drops everywhere. Their stomachs rumbled with tension and effort. Then they saw something black and spiky just before them. They snapped the teeth. Ugh! Thin needles stopped them so much. The hedgehog fled and ran away from hungry puppies. They listened for the mother's voice, but the forest was silent. I love these animals very much, although I'm hellishly afraid of them, because my sister used to scare me, saying, if you do not eat the groats, the wolf will come and eat you. You remember. It went back to the 19th century. All these great paintings by Helmoinsky and by other masters attacking wolves, so terrible. These terrible beasts chase horses, people, no, horrifying. I still remember the stories, even in my childhood. You heard that a skier was skiing through the forest. And the next day only skis were found. But that was all nonsense. Why did I make them? Because the wolves were exterminated terribly. In Poland, bringing a wolf's paw or tail to an appropriate office would earn a thousand złotych. These wolves were simply killed. This was their first adventure together. But certainly not the last one. My practice, which originated from painting, requires constant inspiration, continuous ideas, constant curiosity, studies, experiences. As a result, my workshop constantly changed. What I'm showing is not always so disorderly as here. After a while, I must, of course, bring order to prepare the place for the next job. But this is the very image of my workshop, a lot of water, a lot of brushes, large brushes, small brushes, inks, acrylic paints. These are all water-based paints, of course. At the beginning of my work, the book was immersed in the hegemony of water. It intermingled, it merged all my structures, the exploitation of an incident, which is very important. 
When I almost drowned in this water, I said enough. And so, I started working with harder things. I undertook tempera, I took the papers, I wanted to show that hard is also good. And then again, there were those books that resembled tapestries and their incredibly rich structure. It was painted on papers that I invented. I invented paper from sugar paper bags. It had a lovely surface, beige with irregular structure. The paint slipped on it and the inks in turn flowed and penetrated it. So, after these tapestries and then again, I took the pastels. Pastel has it in its nature. It is so rewarding. It especially likes rough, smooth and dark surfaces. I took up pastels to show the palette of possibilities. Gentle glide. Strong counter. Even stronger. Strong, large planes, still vibrating because the background works. And on top of that, the fingers. When you lighten up, when you push in. Afterwards, you can play with spray. Wait a bit. Wait until it gets even darker. Then we enter the shadows. I have come to a conclusion that it is as if they were painted in oil with glazing. Where you can hardly see anything, glazing. You don't seem to see anything, but that's where it goes deeper in. I changed my technique because I couldn't carry on with one for too long. But something like that could always happen in all this. That it was possible to say about my illustrations that they were, there are Vilcons. There is a common need for painting in children. It gives us peace of mind, it gives us joy. This is where our workshop will be. I will take my jacket off, because it does not help at work. Let us start with the simplest of these effects. Imagine that it is the night, that it was the night. Let us leave the moon here. Yes, there will be a clearing here well, but also horizontally in a row. We can always draw a wolf, for example, or a fox, or a fox, right. I saw once a six-year-old boy painting. I stood behind his back and looked. There is a Picasso film, the camera sits at the back as Picasso paints. 
And I was thinking, I look at him laying down in furbly, these stains and his brush slips harder. I don't know who this boy grew up to be. At that moment, he was a great artist. Some children do not finish and become painters. My family came to me, a surgeon, his wife and the children. We wanted to entertain these children, so we took the saws and axes. I told the surgeon to do the sewing and we cut out these animals. Quickly the children painted them. And in two or three years I noticed how the rain and sun formed patina on them. Isn't it a way to illustrate simply? By sheer coincidence, I had to change the roof, the roof covering. So it was necessary to throw off the roof a large quantity of previous galvanized steel, which was rusty, patinaed, and had such pretty stains. I just cut the sheets of steel. I learned how to hammer, cut, and solder the sheets. And the illustrations were made then. That is to say, the sculptures that I called spatial illustrations, as they were three dimensional. The dogs inspired a book and I added a text. Dog's life. This is an example of how illustrations can also be made by other means. Everyone has something to do. What I do is work. A farmer is just as happy as he watches everything grow nicely. Something inspires. There is something on your mind that you want to do. When it works out, you feel satisfied. And if it does not work out, there's a bit of stress. Perhaps not stress, but ordinary human anger. But if something goes very well, it is a bit of fun. <laughs>